King Tut would have had the best of the best as far as horses went. These were very special breeds that would have been made just for the king because he, he was the king. They would have been ancient Arabians. They would have been the finest stallions pulling his chariot. So that's what we're trying to depict in our exhibit. Based on actual chariots that were buried with King Tut, that were in his tomb, we had a pretty good idea of how tall these horses were. I had to start there, knowing that they were about 13.2 hands tall. One of the cool things I did when I was researching the horses is to go to a Arabian horse farm. They found a mare that very closely matched the dimensions of what I was looking at. By taking the measurements of that horse, that was a good starting point. Our modern Arabian horses are bred with a very slender muzzle, very wide-eyed look. The ancient Arabians were not quite of that breeding. They had a different neck shape, they had a higher tail carriage, they had a straighter back. I looked into the options that I had available for commercial mannequins. There's only one commercially available horse mannequin out there, and it's for a larger uh, thoroughbred horse. So. I knew I had to really downsize that mannequin a lot. I took a series of measurements and I downsized it by 4%. I started to figure out the pose and everything and started cutting it. Right out of the belly area, we took two inches and then put the mannequin back together. And then all the way from the base of the tail to the base of the head, I took an inch, the full length of the horse, put it back together, and then an inch out of each quarter and put it back together, and then two inches out of each leg. And that kind of downsized it pretty close to what I needed. And then of course I had to cut and alter and change the head and, and the neck and other parts. Once I put it all back together, then I had to carve it smooth and then started carving the muscles back in. And then I poured the urethane foam on areas where I needed to bulk up. It's a two-part liquid foam that you mix and it expands and hardens and then you can carve it. I spackled the seams, sanded them good and then sealed it for a base to get ready to put the epoxy coating on. So this is a two-part epoxy putty. What I'm using it for is for actually modeling the hair texture. You can see the rest of the area has all had little hairs kind of modeled in. So it's kind of tedious, but once it's painted, it really gives a nice illusion. There is real horse hair in the manes and tails. This whole seam will be hidden because it'll be down in the groove that I'm going to route into the neck. Perfect. Fits just right. And I used real horse ear hair. I clipped hair and put it all inside my modeled ears to make it look real. And there's real horse eyelashes and whiskers and eyebrow hairs. The detail part is the, that's the challenge. That's the capturing the soul of the animal. Most of the painting was done by Judith, our wonderful volunteer here. We just worked out a nice pattern and worked, uh, worked together on that, and she did a really, really fabulous job, and I think it really brings them to life. We're trying to depict that the chariot is not underway yet. They're not moving. The horses are anxious. They know something's going on, but they don't know what. I also wanted to show different personalities in these two horses. I kind of purposely made one look kind of happy and the other one look kind of sassy. You know, one of the horses I have turned with the neck and the ears forward, tried to make it so he was like focusing at kids level, so it would look like he was really looking at kids. I think the first horse took me 10 months to do, and the second one I think I did in about seven months. So it was quite a, quite a process. I love a challenge. I mean, to me, that's so fun to, to try to figure out how to make something 100% artificial look real. Love that. That's one of my favorite parts of my job, is it's sculpture, it's art, so you don't know exactly how it's going to turn out till it's done. <laughs>